Greetings from Ames, Iowa. Uh, typically, when we gather for the annual association board annual meeting, it's typically uh, during a football game, typically during homecoming, and we're typically all in person. Uh, here, many of us are not in person. Some of us are here. So uh, how about all the people here in person give a, a clap? I don't know if the people in the... Uh, So, so we have a number. We have a number of folks here, and I know we have a number of folks joining us online. So, I would like to uh, welcome and thank the folks for joining us online. Uh, we're pleased that you could uh, join us. Uh, typically, you know, we're able to visit with each other to have a nice uh, meeting, and we're, you know, we do business, and so we're going to do that business today. Uh, but then we're also uh, we're going to miss some of the other things. Uh, but in terms of keeping with our traditional practice, how about we begin today uh, by reciting the object? So if you know the object, uh, and you can't see this folks at home, but all of the active members and the others here today uh, are standing up to recite the object. So uh, here we go. The object of our fraternity is to promote good fellowship, to encourage studiousness, and to inspire its members in seeking the best in their chosen lines of study as well as in life. Progress shall mark our every step. The spirit of congeniality shall reign at all times, and every member shall be honest with himself as with his brothers. Men elected to our membership are considered to be of good moral character, to be high in scholarship, to have the capacity for meeting and making friends, and to give promise of service to their fellow men and to the world. To be and become such may at times require sacrifices of time, pleasures, and comforts. Thank you. And I don't know if you at home uh, could hear it, uh, but it felt nice to hear so many people recite the object. So uh, let me begin. This is my president's report. Oh, well, first we'll begin with the approval of the 2019 annual meeting minutes. Uh, those were sent. Uh, our uh, great uh, alumni director, Andy, uh, sent those to us. Andy Schmidt sent those to us earlier. And so uh, hopefully you've had a chance to review those. Uh, the association board, we've had a chance to review the minutes from last year's meetings. So uh, I guess I'll see if there are any questions on the minutes. And I think uh, for you folks at home, uh, we, you know, we're able to hear from you, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so we're able to hear from you. And I'll just wait another few seconds to see if you have any uh, questions or comments on the 2019 annual meeting minutes. Okay, seeing none, I'll uh, entertain a motion. Uh, I'll call on Treasurer Eugene Rotberg. Our Treasurer Eugene Rotberg has moved to approve the minutes from last year's annual meeting. Is there a second? Matt Scoshog, our Association Board Vice President, has seconded that motion. Uh, any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, uh, all in favor of approving the 2019 annual me meeting minutes say aye. Or if you're online, uh, indicate that if you can online virtually. And and so thank you to the folks uh, virtually online uh, who've shown their uh, approval. And so with that, the 2019 annual meeting minutes have been approved. You can clap. Yay. I told you we'd get some business done. So we're, we're moving along, getting some business done. Next up is my president's report. Uh, 
So let me just say this. Uh, the association board, we've been working diligently since late winter to do what we can to help provide a self and a welcoming environment for the active members in the chapter. Uh, we have had the input of the chapter advisors, uh, Joel Johnson, Russell Jones, and Joe Waters. Uh, their insight has been invaluable, as has that as of uh, uh, Phyllis Fievold, who represents the Moms Club on the association board. And I imagine that you will later hear uh, from Jill Schmidt in the Moms Club report uh, about all of the wonderful things that they have been doing to help make uh, the life uh, in the COVID world here so much better for the active members. And so uh, as we share with Phyllis at all of the meetings, uh, we on the association board, we really appreciate that. And I'll share that uh, publicly with Jill right now. We really appreciate that. So let's give the Moms Club a round of applause uh, for all that they do. And later, uh, when we move to business, you'll have a chance to consider and approve the association uh, board's budget for the next year. And as you do that, I would just like uh, to say how fortunate we all are as a group to have Eugene Rodberg as our treasurer. He's uh, thorough, he's exacting, and he's the kind of person who you want uh, as a great volunteer doing the work that he's doing. Uh, he has a, a fine and keen grasp on all of the regulations and the rules to get reimbursement uh, from the Iowa State Foundation, from the Farmhouse Foundation and the like. And so we appreciate him. And we also appreciate the work of the Iowa State Foundation and the Iowa State uh, and the Farmhouse Foundation. And uh, in particular, uh, Allison Rickles for all that uh, she does and they do uh, to help support our efforts uh, to help uh, run the business aspect of managing this very fine home. So. Uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, you know those folks again. So let's give a round of applause to those folks. Okay. Now, in terms of some of the things that we have been doing uh, over the past year, we have provided funds to increase Wi-Fi access or the level of Wi-Fi in the house, and I'm told that that has been a successful effort. Uh, we've also uh, work to provide some uh, food capabilities in the dining room. So uh, you at home can't see this, but because of COVID, there's been questions about, you know, how can we best keep the members safe? How can we uh, best help effectuate food service? And, uh, you know, the men eating when, uh, you know, like, in the evening or in the morning or whenever. And so we have outfitted a portion of the dining room uh, with an additional refrigerator and some microwaves. And I think others may cover this, uh, but I did just want that. So th those are some things that we've uh, been supporting. And we also uh, have some provided some support uh, to help outfit the downstairs game room as a quarantine area. And so uh, we would not have done all those things without the input and guidance from the chapter members. And so we want to thank them for telling us how we could better assist them uh, because we work, you know, we all lived here, you know, the association board members, we all lived here at some point and we all know the experience we had. And we know that uh, our experience was greatly informed by the alumni who uh, came before us and who served on the board and who uh, gave up their time, treasures and talents. And so that's why we're doing what we're doing, but we could not be, successful in doing what we would want to do if they did not share with us their input. And so we really appreciate that input. Uh, they challenge us. Uh, they they help us learn about new things uh, going on in food service. They help us learn about uh, just new ways that they can learn and uh, experience uh, communal living. So we appreciate that. And I'll additionally say we have been really impressed. The association board has been really impressed with the leadership shown by all of the the chapter, by the uh, all of the active members uh, throughout this, especially throughout this COVID time. Uh, they've really stepped up. They found creative ways to increase their brotherhood. They've uh, worked to hold each other accountable. And uh, we're not here every day, so we don't see that. We're not here any days really, so we don't see that. But we get great reports. Uh, from the chapter advisors, and, and we get a uh, great report from Jamie Hewitt. And so uh, we're just really appreciative of all that. 
And many of us, we were uh, impressed but not surprised when we uh, heard of the work that the men did following the duration. Duration, right? Duration. The, yeah. I sometimes, yeah, that's an odd word. Uh, during the duration, when they helped out their neighbors um, by cutting, cleaning debris, uh, cutting trees, and the like. And so uh, we were pleased to hear about that. Now, and especially during COVID, as I mentioned, they've really stepped up. And uh, the association board really appreciates the work that the current president, Zach Mass, has done uh, in creating these uh, COVID updates for us. And I don't know if any of you uh, watching virtually have uh, received any of those. I don't know if the mom club receives them or not, but they are, they're thorough. Uh, they show a real commitment uh, to being safe. Uh, to doing what they can do to uh, to take care of one another, to take care of any visitors, to take care of the larger community. And so uh, we really appreciate that. And so, but I'll just say, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, Zach, uh, the former president, Brad Welch, uh, and Andy Schmidt and others, they've just done a great job of keeping us informed. Uh, and so we appreciate that. So let's give them a round of applause. And so, as, as you may know, uh, if you have any relationship with our fraternity, in many ways, we work as an ecosystem. And we work best when we work together, when we uh, communicate, and uh, when we uh, do our part and work together. And uh, given her involvement in so many uh, facets of our fraternity, it is clear that the house director is a key component in that ecosystem. And the past two years, I think it's past two years, right? That saw the beginning of the Jamie Hewitt era as house director. And sometimes it doesn't take long to tell if a search committee knocked it out of the box. I mean, sometimes, sometimes it doesn't take long to see if they failed too. But uh, in this case, no, I mean, it doesn't take long. Some, right, some, right, sometimes it doesn't take long. But uh, in this case, the committee of active chapter members and alumni members who brought Jamie to Farmhouse really knocked it out of the box. Uh, you know, her, she, she is tireless in her commitment, uh, in her caring for the well-being and safety uh, and the success of our members. And so we're really fortunate to have Jamie. So in my president's report, uh, I wanted to make sure we acknowledge. So please give Jamie a round of applause. And, and if you can't hear it at home, uh, they were clapping. And, and, and I'll, I'll just say this, you know, if someone on the association board, when COVID first started, we were saying, Jamie, you know, go home, stay safe, you know, advise us, you know, from your home if you would like, you know, do whatever you want. But uh, she is so tired in her commitment, you know, uh, she's on the, uh, the security access. You know, so during the summer, if there was an issue with security, she would get a phone call. And she's just been tireless in uh, proposing ideas uh, for our consideration, uh, pushing us in, in certain ways. And so, again, uh, I just wanted to be clear that we so greatly appreciate uh, the work that Jamie uh, has done uh, for us and with us. So uh, I have a, uh, a show and tell item here. And I know we have uh, many folks on uh, with us virtually who maybe were here during the time of uh, President Parks. So this book here is called Alone Among Friends, a biography of W. Robert Parks. Uh, president Parks was you know, a longtime president here. And uh, the library is named after President Parks and his wife. And uh, I bring this, though, just for uh, a particular reason uh, to have show and tell, because it's inscribed. Let me read the inscription to you. Well, first I'll show it to you if you can see it. Okay. So it says, Dear Paxton, Harold Crawford said you would like a signature, and I'm happy and pleased to comply. Thanks and best wishes, W. Robert Parks. So uh, I bring this book because, because I thought of this book Earlier this year, when Dr. Crawford, who was a great farmhouse man and a uh, 
longtime associate dean of the department, um, the, the College of Ag here at Iowa State, when he passed away. And I actually worked for uh, Dr. Crawford the summer of 2000. And that's, this is a farmhouse story because I came to work for Dr. Crawford because I was walking on Central Campus talking to a Dr. Ken Larson, another great farmhouse man. And we were just chatting. And Dr. Larson was a longtime uh, professor as well uh, here. And he asked me what I was doing that summer. I said, well, I have no plans, you know, but I was going to be going to study public policy at Michigan in the, the fall. But I thought it might be fun to stay in Ames, you know, for one last summer. And we were talking. And then Dr. Crawford walked up. And then Dr. Crawford said, oh, what are you talking about? And then Dr. Larson was like, oh, Paxton might want to have a job here in Ames this summer. And then uh, Dr. Carver said, ooh, let me think of something. And so, uh, yeah, so I ended up working here uh, that summer in the Native American Tribal College Initiatives Office that Dr. Crawford was running in his uh, retirement or semi-retirement uh, days. And uh, during that summer, we took a trip to North and South Dakota, just the two of us in the car, visiting uh, tribal colleges. And it was just so very eye-opening, and it was so great to experience that with Dr. Crawford, just a, a great, a great farmhouse man. And so when he passed away, uh, I was reminded of my summer working for him, and I was reminded of Ken Larson, Dr. Ken Larson, and I was reminded of just the connections that uh, we make, you know, because of the fraternity. Uh, but for the fraternity, I most likely would not have known uh, Dr. Crawford or Dr. Larson. I was not an ag major, right? And so. I met them through Farmhouse. And so as we all go on through life, you know, we meet folks uh, and we make connections and we get opportunities. And so uh, as I and others on the association board, you know, we all try to do, we try to, uh, you know, pass that forward and, and try to remember that and try to pay tribute uh, to the encouragement and the opportunities that we were given. So that's why I wanted to, to bring my show and tell book. And uh, we also... Uh, this year lost uh, another great farmhouser and Dr. Owen Newland. You know, many of you may know Dr. Newland. He'd been president of the State Board of Regents uh, for many years. He'd been uh, with Pioneer uh, Hybrid for many years. Uh, he was like one of the first employees, I think, uh, of, of Pioneer Hybrid. And so uh, just a, a great mentor to many, a great friend to many. And so when he, so Dr. Crawford passed away in May at age 95, and then Dr. Newland passed away in July at age 92. And so when Dr. Newland passed away, Jim Tobin, uh, himself a master builder, uh, reached out to the association board and had an idea of maybe creating a scholarship fund, uh, working to create a scholarship fund for international travel that our uh, members, that our active chapter members could benefit from. And then if there were no Iowa State Forum House uh, active chapter members who could who would apply for it, then other farmhousers, uh, you know, could apply for it. And so the association board, we all thought that was a great idea. And so we worked with uh, Allison Rickles, who I mentioned is the uh, president of the Farmhouse Foundation, and Dr. Stephen Lonergan, who is our foundation chair. And we created a fund that will both honor Dr. Newland while also assisting in the educational and cultural development of our brothers and donations have already begun to come in for this fund. And so much thanks goes to those alumni who have supported this effort, but then also to all of the alumni who for countless years uh, have donated towards the various scholarship funds that we have been able to provide for our members. Uh, they say it's a great benefit to them and it's a great uh, potentially recruitment tool for us. And so uh, it's, so let's give all of our donors and supporters uh, a round of applause. And, and, and you, people are clapping if you can't hear it at home. And, and if you uh, are one of our donors and supporters uh, at home watching this, please give yourselves a round of applause. Okay. No. So, and it's things, oh, and I should also note, so uh, we have a great foundation chair in Stephen Lonergan as well. Uh, he works with uh, Matt Scarshog, our vice uh, president, on the uh, scholarship committee. And they've done a great job uh, with that. And in fact, just today we got an email from Dr. Lonergan telling us that we have two uh, members who just received 
the Farmhouse Scholarship for ISU Ag majors, and this is a uh, they'll receive a hundred they'll, they'll receive a thousand dollars each, and uh, the recipients are Colton Moore and Grant Keenheist, Keenist, and Grant Keenist. So give them a round of applause. <laughs> and the uh, though that scholarship has many donors, it was organized by Paul Castle. Okay. And so now as things happen, I the Iowa State chapter of Farmhouse, we gained another master builder when Craig Harris was named the recipient of our fraternity's highest honor earlier this year. And so we congratulate and thank Craig on his many years of dedicated and varied service. Congrats, Craig. So I'm going to be back later to uh, engage in the business aspect uh, of the meeting. But now I would like to bring up our treasurer, Eugene Rotberg, for the treasurer's report. Thank you, Paxton. And the fun of the numbers is uh, they're boring unless you are actively engaged in them, but I will try with my presentation here to give you a little flavor of some of the challenges that we faced this year uh, with the shutdown of the house in the month of March and the um, opportunity really to do some innovation and some improvements to the house uh, under the direction of Jamie. Uh, she kind of shepherded several men as we uh, employed them for the summer. So let's go through the numbers really quickly. And on slide number two, um, we uh, have a summary of the foundation accounts. And in your packet, if you look through it, you see all the different uh, funds that are available through the different channels. And you can see those numbers. But uh, bottom line, the ISU Foundation account, there's about $250,000 in that account, of which about just over 200000 of it is available for scholarships. And those are a combination of, 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 of different scholarships. And as you read through it, you can see those scholarships. Uh, there's some money in there for technology. And that is basically for computers. Uh, like Paxton mentioned, we improved the wireless system uh, during the shutdown so or before the shutdown. And so we were able to use those uh, technology funds for that purpose. And then, of course, the building improvement fund. And I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. But that's money that's available for us to get back as grants as we make improvements to the uh, structure. Uh, at Farmhouse Foundation, uh, there's just short of uh, $3.5 million, and you can see the breakdown of those different categories. And again, getting back down to the building fund, uh, there's just over 600000 in the building fund. And one of the projects that the board, uh, that the outgoing board, uh, that uh, kind of passed off to the new board, is the idea of doing the kitchen. And when we did this remodel on the existing structure, we took a structure that held just over you know, 55 guys and made it into a structure that held 74 people. Well, we didn't do anything with the kitchen at that time. So we've been kind of kicking the can down the road. And so we're actually going to be engaging in a project to improve the functionality and some of the utilities in the kitchen. And so that's where some of these funds will be coming from. So um, if you see... Uh, a request or a, a plea, if you will, uh, for funding for the kitchen uh, project. Uh, that's what we're doing is we're basically bringing the kitchen up to a capacity to be able to uh, feed uh, 74 men as opposed to the old structure. So that's one that uh, we definitely, uh, as a board, agreed is a significant project that we need to look at. Uh, next slide. This shows you the cash flow. And what I do in this, I, I, I did this last year, but basically showing the expected cash flow and, and the guys uh, here live can't see it, but um, the red line represents what actually happened every single month where we ended up at the end of the month with our cash. The blue line was what we projected and things were going just fine as most everything did until basically the shutdown. And you can see the red line starts to diverge uh, from the blue line about in April. And that was when the board agreed to pay the chapter half of their rent back 
because they weren't going to be using the house for half of the year. Um, we did, and, and, and your board did a phenomenal job of doing some cash flow projections, looking at, okay, how can we reduce expenses so that we can still give back to the chapter and still end the year where we expected to end? Um, and at the same time, I applied for a small business administration loan uh, due to the CARES Act. We were able to apply for that under our nonprofit status, um, and we didn't know if we'd need it, but we wanted to have it just in case we needed it. So there's a, a red line that shoots up right at the very end there in July, and you can see that uh, that's where we got our $100,000 small business administration loan. You can also see the new green line that I put in there that basically shows what would have happened had we not had the small business administration loan. And the nice thing was we ended the year uh, only $2,700 short of what our projections were. So through good cash management, through some really e economied, uh, you know, the house projects that we did, we hired our chapter members to do it. Uh, and they did a better job than some professionals would have done and did it for less money. And Jamie's nodding her head in acknowledgement that the work that they did was phenomenal. And, and those uh, six men that we engaged to do that were very, very good. Um, so uh, getting back to the Small Business Administration loan, again, we didn't know if we'd need it, and your board has already approved paying back half of that. So we were very glad that we had it. We're also very glad that we were able to have a full fall semester, at least at this point, we're still looking like we'll have a full fall semester. And then if we have a full spring semester, I will advise the board to pay off that loan. But again, it was very good to have that loan to be able to bridge. And it was nice that the CARES Act provided for nonprofits to be able to access those funds. So that that's that graph. And again, we ended up in very good financial position last year, essentially where we started the year. Okay, so the next slide is the budget slide. And you can read more into the budget, but bottom line, uh, I budgeted and the board approved to uh, basically have about, uh, and the problem with eyes is you have to uh, uh, change as you get older, but um, we have about $54,000 of residual, more more income than out, outflow this year. That was purposefully done because again, we didn't know what the semesters were going to look like. So we purposely budgeted to have some extra. That's going to be good because that's funding, that's additional money that we can use to um, accelerate our, our mortgage or for the kitchen project, as I previously mentioned. So uh, the budget is not a balanced budget for this year. However, the goal for the board will be to end essentially at the same level that we started this year. So looking at the next slide, this is just the cash flow projections. Uh, this is what the uh, projections would look like based off the budget. And you can see uh, I've got some um, circles in here for grant payments and for extra mortgage payments. Uh, those are already uh, built into the budget. And again, based off this cash flow, we'll start the year at about $190,000, which is where we started our fiscal year. And we'll end the year uh, making about $50,000 on the year. Again, we don't plan to do that, but that's what's in the budget for right now, and we'll modify that. Okay, so um, next slide. This next slide shows where we are with regard to our mortgage. And there's three lines on here, actually four lines that are critical to kind of look at. Uh, the blue line is, again, when we took out the mortgage, the original uh, payoff plan. So you can see that the original plan was to pay this mortgage off uh, well into the future in in, in uh, 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 15 year mortgage. Uh, immediately, Dr. Lonergan began to pay down the mortgage faster. Uh, and that's the red line. That was the projected uh, pay down line. And then the green line is what your board has been doing since basically we started paying the mortgage by paying additional mortgage payments. And you can see the trajectory of that line is significantly um, accelerated. And as of right now, we're projected, even with the, uh, the payback of the um, rent that we did this year, we're projected to uh, pay off our mortgage November of 2032. Uh, and hopefully we can pay it off even faster than that. But as of right now, we're on a very good plane to be able to get that paid off uh, ahead of time um, and, and uh, then move on to some other projects. So uh, my final slide is what can you do? And Again, uh, we've got the kitchen project that we're going to be looking for. Uh, so any 
funds that you have that you want to put toward uh, helping out the ISU Foundation or the Farmhouse Foundation with building fund uh, monies, uh, contact me, contact Dr. Lonergan, uh, uh, and we can uh, direct you to the right direction. Of course, Allison will always help with figuring out where the money needs to go. Uh, th those are, again, are grants that we're able to access as we're putting the project together. We can then utilize those funds to help uh, defer some of the costs or defray some of the costs. Um, and again, um, these are um, deductible uh, uh, donations that you can make. If you're in a position like me and like other people where your deductions are no longer there, uh, and, and, you know, giving non-deductible money is an option. Uh, you can give directly to the Iowa State Foundation or the, uh, sorry, the Iowa State Association. Uh, by giving directly to us, there is no tax deductibility, but we can use 100% of that toward the house or toward the kitchen project or however. So if you have questions on that, contact me directly and we'll arrange uh, for, for those funds to be utilized in however you'd like them to be used. Um, add to scholarships. Um, I did this a couple of years ago at uh, the foundation, uh, contacted Allison and gave my contribution to basically beef up a scholarship. So, so now these scholarships, uh, a $500 scholarship is great and, and we love having those, but a $1,000 scholarship goes a lot longer uh, you know, toward education and education is not getting cheaper. So helping to beef up these scholarships really helps these students uh, defer the costs of their education. Um, Mentor a student. Uh, I, I've had really good opportunities to uh, work directly with the people on, on Iowa State campus. A uh, really good opportunity to give back uh, by mentoring somebody. Um, continue to suggest names. Uh, you know, this year was phenomenal with the outpouring of support that you all were able to give. So we had some really good names for rushing, uh, and and we got a for tremendous uh, chap uh, a, a new foundation uh, with this new pledge class. So very good uh, uh, recruiting for this year. And then finally, uh, if you ever have a chance to serve the board or be an advisor, uh, that is, for me, it's been really rewarding to come back to Farmhouse and be able to give back. So th those are the suggestions that I would have for what you can do uh, to help uh, with the foundation and with the uh, with Farmhouse locally. So with that, um, any questions coming up on the chat or any? Okay. So, sure, we'll give you a few more seconds. But uh, again, the bottom line, your foundation or your, your association uh, and the board has done a phenomenal job this year of managing the cash flow, uh, really weathering the storm and, and being able to give back to the house uh, you know, a sizable amount of their rent so that they were able to uh, give uh, – you know, rebates back to the, each of the chapter members. So a uh, very uh, good financial stewardship of your board this year. So seeing no questions on the chat, we will then uh, bring up Zach for the uh, chapter report. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, and hello. Uh, my name is Zach Mass. I am a senior this year studying software engineering. I'm originally from uh, Southwest Iowa, Trainer, Iowa, to be specific, and uh, I've had the honor this semester to serve as chapter president. So uh, I would just like to start by talking a little bit about, uh, obviously, this year has been a very different year from what any of us expected uh, uh, as COVID has happened. Uh, things have had to look very different. But I want to sort of emphasize throughout my time to speak with all of you just how my, how hopeful I am for the future of Iowa State, mostly because of the way that I've seen our chapter members be able to respond and really be creative and, you know, look for new, great, positive ways to continue doing what makes Farmhouse special, even when things had to look a little different. So, for example, um, the week before spring break was when we first started, uh, within a week's time, going from, okay, COVID is coming to America, not sure how that affects us, to all of a sudden, oh, classes might get canceled, to oh, we're all moving out of the chapter facility. So that was about a week turnaround for all of us in the spring. Um, it wasn't what any of us expected. Um, uh, a lot of us had to change plans. We had seniors, for example, who all of a sudden had to reconcile with the fact that they weren't coming back to campus for their last semester. Um, we had to be creative about ways to be able to respond to that and look for ways to really show our brothers that we cared about them and celebrate their graduations. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of us had internships over the summer that got changed. 
Personally, I was working for Hy-Vee for the summer doing software development, and I went to a completely virtual internship. Um, I was pretty fortunate that my internship still happened. A lot of members had to look for completely new summer opportunities as a result of that. So things have looked very different and very strange in a lot of ways. But on the other hand, Farmhouse has been a really invaluable support for a lot of our members as they've had to face those changes. So for example, as, as some of our members had internships canceled and plans changed for the summer, they immediately reached out to their brothers. And we had a lot of alumni and a lot of other chapter members who immediately looked for ways to say, OK, I know this opportunity is available. These are definitely things that we can do. Um, I know there were a couple of chapter members who got reached out to by alumni over LinkedIn when they, they saw that things that their summer plans had changed and immediately were able to find them new opportunities. So that's been a really awesome thing to see. Other examples of things that we've been able to respond to. Um, as we've moved back, to, as we've moved back to the chapter facility this fall, we've obviously had to change the way chapter meetings worked. You know, we've had to wear masks on first floor. We've had some chapter meetings when members have had to quarantine, and this room is pretty empty, for example. Um, but we've been able to really creatively tackle some of the things that we would normally be doing. For example, our normal homecoming festivities were mostly canceled this year. Um, but that being said, our chapter members wanted to go out and build a lawn display. So if you look in our front lawn right now, if you're ever driving through Ames, there is a giant pumpkin beginning construction right now, um, <laughs> largely due to a couple chapter members, includes, including our business manager, who thought, you know, we want to get out. We want to have some fun as brothers and just build something like we normally would. Um, another example, our Burritoville philanthropy is normally a huge in-person event when we walk hundreds of people through these doors to get all-you-can-eat burritos. Obviously, that couldn't happen because of COVID, but we were able to quickly adapt the idea, and so we had a Sonic-style drive-in, drive-through in our parking lot. And as a result of that, we were still able to raise over $5,000 for Children's Cancer Connection. So... So that's an example of ways that we've really been able to adapt. Um, there are lots of other examples that I could talk about all day in our house because things have had to look so different this semester. But I'm really proud of the way that our men have really been able to respond well, really look for ways that we can do things safely, but still try and keep what makes Farmhouse special and keep that happening. So that's really when I, what I want to emphasize today. Um, to speak a little bit more about COVID issues specifically in the house, our game room was converted to a sick room this fall. So uh, that's a little bit of a different scenario, obviously, than what we're used to. Um, we've encouraged mask wearing. We require mask wearing on first floor and at any chapter events. Um, we've also had done a lot of extensive contact tracing, both with the help of the university doing their contact tracing and us doing our own within the house. And we've really been able to keep case numbers at a really acceptable level within the chapter. Uh, to date, we've had 30 members who have tested positive who have lived in living in the house. All of them have recovered successfully. We've really been able to do a good job of keeping the spread limited within the chapter facility, and we think most of the spread is probably not happening here, happening here within the house. So we're very thankful for that, and we're very thankful for the way that we've been able to respond to that as well. And to sort of, to sort of go off of that, uh, two, uh, we we know that this semester looks different, and we know that this that things are going to continue to look different in the future. But I continue to be hopeful that we'll be able to adapt. Um, so another example, we were able to have 23 new members this this fall. So that's pretty comparable to our normal level of recruitment. So I really want to thank our rush chairs for the summer. So Zach Rankin and Crane Capel. And they were able to put together a committee to help them do recruitment when we couldn't do our normal rush functions like we've always done. So I want to thank them so much for their work and a big round of applause to them. So. <laughs> so yeah, and to sort of to, so I know the question usually gets asked then, how full is the house? Normally, Normally, we have 74 spots. Um, we have 69 of those 74 spots filled this semester. So we're in a very sustainable position. We're already recruiting for next semester and have given out three bids so far. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, 
we have our pearl ceremony tomorrow. So we're already initiating those 23 new members that I just talked about. So as I say, um, I continue to be encouraged by this class. I do think that we're in a very strong position right now, um, but it really would not have been possible without the support of all of our great alumni, the association board and advisors who've worked with us through all of this happening. And I really wanna just give a big round of applause and a big thank you for that. So. So I'm going to keep my report short, so that's all I have for now. But uh, if Andy has any questions from the live stream, I'd be more than happy to answer any of those. Yeah, so um, I feel pretty, yeah. Yes, uh, the question was, uh, how do I feel that Iowa State has done in handling COVID? So I think as a whole, I would say it has done a very good job of handling COVID. I, uh, within the chapter specifically, we saw a huge spike about two weeks from the beginning of classes, just like the rest of campus saw. Um, and I think a lot of that obviously was just because people didn't know how students were going to respond when they got back to campus. And so I think we've all had to adjust a little bit to that, um, just correct some of the assumptions that administration had made, some of the assumptions we as the chapter had made. But I think that overall, we, we're in a very sustainable spot. And I think we've seen that, especially with campus numbers. Um, the spike was about two weeks after everyone came back. And then since then, numbers have remained pretty low. This last week, I think there were a total of 50 students who got a positive test for coronavirus, which is incredibly low. Um, and I think we're at a very sustainable spot right now. Um, I went home this weekend, for example, and I know that my home county is seeing a current resurgence that we're not seeing in names right now. So I think the people of Story County and the students specifically have done a good job of really trying to keep everyone safe and handle the situation well, even as case numbers continue to rise elsewhere. So. Uh, total for both is 104. 100, oh, my secretary is yelling five at me, 105. So uh, we're staying pretty constant over the last several semesters at around 100 members. Um, we as the chapter feel that's kind of the sweet spot. Um, there are other chapters on campus that are now in like the 140, 150 range. Um, and we think that's probably a little too large to really grow per close personal relationships between brothers. So we really like the position that we're at now and the current membership we're at. All right, well with that, thank you so much. Um, I again wanna thank, uh, first off, all of the chapter members for all the work that they put in this semester and all of our alumni for their continued support. So with that, I'm going to hand the mic over to our Moms Club president and she's going to give you a little bit of a report as well. So thank you. Thank you, Zach. It's a privilege to be in Ames today and share with you that Moms Club is alive and well and continuing keeping up the traditions that were started way back in 1965 by some brilliant women who figured out a very meaningful and practical way to stay involved in their sons' lives. Over 1,300 moms have joined the ranks of our club over the past 55 years. My name is Jill Schmidt and I have the honor of serving as the Moms Club president this year. I live in St. Anthony, Minnesota, which is a suburb of the Twin Cities, and I'm a 1993 graduate of Iowa State University, which is also where I met my wonderful husband, Steve, who was a farm houser back in the day. And my son, Andy, is serving as your current alumni director. He's a junior studying mechanical engineering. The object of Moms Club is threefold. We're here to assist the house director as she may request. We're also here to encourage fellowship amongst the mothers. And finally, to carry out projects for the comfort and convenience of the farmhouse men, I like to say we provide the icing on the cake for our sons. Well, Moms Club fundraises to the tune of anywhere between 3,000 and 8,000 annually for those annual comfort, those extra comforts and conveniences that are not covered by the dues and the A board. We also provide gifts for new initiates and to celebrate the birthdays of our house director and chef along with support, supporting pledged son and dad events. 
And the best part is that these requests for the extra amenities are made directly from the chapter men and delivered almost immediately after mom's weekend or as soon as we can purchase them. So as you look around this amazing house, the next time um, those of you that online can come visit and you see the patio furniture, air compressors, lots and lots of fitness equipment for our, our fit farmhouse men, Coliseum furniture, meaningful artwork, Bible studies, materials, a new salad bar, and countless replacement washers and dryers. Over the years, you'll see the signature of Mom's Club. You know, we just can't seem to shake that role of head laundry master, but as moms, it's a joy to do so, and we'll take it. Mostly Mom's Club is about fellowship and fun, which we have on Mom's Weekend, move-in day, and even on summer cleaning day, where this summer we had a record number of 22 brave moms, eight of them new member moms, come join us to clean the house. And during this time, we decided that this is the day that we really bless the house and bless the men who will be living in it for the upcoming year. Moms Club activity has picked up a bit this year due to some coronavirus concerns and safety concerns in the house. And in May, our very wise and proactive house director, Jamie, contacted us and asked if we might consider providing face masks for the guys coming in the fall. So in response, we were able to provide two gators for each active member of the house on move-in day. Another new project came in late August when a representative of the exec team kindly and sweetly asked our club for new front porch furniture. Uh, the patio furniture out front was in disarray and shambles, and they are looking for extra space to study and socialize, again, due to the, the coronavirus. And um, I have to say, the, the mamas in mom clubs heard their cry, and we mobilized into action and raised enough money to purchase two tables and eight chairs of high-quality Amish-made furniture that will last for generations. It, will take, it, it only took less than a week to raise the money secure the furniture, and get it set up for use. And the men have been, been enjoying it all fall. Is that not evidence that our generous mom loves their, love their farmhouse sons and will always come through in record time? In fact, if there was an award for Moms Club, I'm convinced that farmhouse would win it hands down. Thank you. Thank you. In the past few months, two moms with sons in different fraternities at Iowa State have contacted us because they've heard about our amazing moms in our group and wanted to get some ideas on how to explore how to set up a club for their sons' fraternities. And also, just last week, our past president, Nancy Ann Thompson, spoke with some folks at Farmhouse International, and they were highly complimentary of our work, relationship with the A Board, and the active support we give the Iowa State chapter. They know of no others like it in the country. So today, just if you get a chance, please thank Nancy Ann Thompson, Phyllis Feebold, Jean Claybaugh, Sandy Mass, and Sarah Markman for their leadership as officers, and know that we are so humbled and very grateful for the opportunity to serve Farmhouse through our awesome Moms Club. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jill, for that wonderful report. And just as importantly, thank you and all of the folks uh, with, with the Moms Club for all the work that you do. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we all see it. We appreciate what you're doing. And uh, it is a, it's a great benefit that it's almost difficult to quantify because it adds so much uh, to the experience of the members here. Uh, and so thank you again. Okay. So now we will move to the formal business aspect of the meeting, and we will begin uh, with the approval of the 2019-2020 Association Board transactions. And so uh, we'll see if there's any questions. And so those transactions are just like the expenditures that we did and the actions that we took that you've gotten some report on a few moments ago and you've received. So. Uh, is there any questions uh, regarding the 2019-2020 board transactions? I'll wait a few moments for the folks virtually to see if they 
uh, sending anything. Okay. Not hearing anything. I'll in I'll entertain a motion. Okay. Uh, our treasurer Eugene Rotberg has moved. Uh, is there a second? Matt Sc Matt Scarsh or who else? Who's this over here? What's your name? Oh, Kellen Cosgrove. Oh, he's not a. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. Oh, Matt Scarshog has approved, has seconded the motion. Uh, is there any discussion? I'll wait a few moments to see if there's anything. Okay. Not seeing any or hearing any. Uh, all in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Okay. All opposed say no. Okay, and we're waiting on folk votes uh, virtually. Okay, in oh uh well any abstentions? We'll see first. No abstentions. Okay. Okay. So it the motion we have a majority, the motion passes. Next up, we will move to the approval of the 2020-2021 association budget. Uh is there any discussion? I know we all appreciate it, Eugene's uh great uh, thorough report. Okay, I think I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Sh What's your first name? Steve Schmidt uh, 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 makes the motion. Uh, is there any, uh, is there a second? Matt Scarshaw seconds. Uh, is there any further discussion? Was that right? Yeah. Okay. So the, ma the motion has been moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor, uh, say aye, or vote uh, online virtually. All right. Okay. Oh, so uh, all in, so we have a majority. And all the folks here say aye. I mean, are, are all the folks here vote? Is, did I? Okay. So uh, if there's anyone, anyone opposed to it here, like here uh, in the at the chapter house. Okay. So it looks like uh, the motion passes. So the 2020 uh, 21 association budget has been approved. Uh, now we will move to the election of the uh, the new members for the association board. Uh, we have two nominees uh, on the slate. Uh, Kurt Rosentrader, uh, who was uh, uh, activated in 1990. Uh, he's a professor here at Iowa State. Uh, he is up for re-election. And Dan Johnson, who I was in the house with, who was activated in 99, uh, uh, who is uh, with the Army Corps of Engineers and was, uh, I think, an ag engineer major here at Iowa State. Those are our two uh, nominees. Uh, I think we, are there any nominations from the floor? Or virtually from the floor? Okay. Not hearing any. Um, I'll entertain a motion regarding, uh, what, what, was there any questions about the two nominees? I mean, they're not here, but are there, is there any? Okay. So uh, I'll entertain a motion regarding, would someone like to move to elect these two uh, members? Oh, one at a time. So, um, okay, Eugene Rotberg uh, moves to uh, approve Kurt uh, Rosentrader uh, for the association board. All in favor, uh, say aye if you're here or uh, and vote either way online. Okay. All the people opposed here in the chapter house say, if you're opposed, say no. 
Mm -hmm. Any abstentions here in the chapter house? Okay. So now we'll just wait to see what the uh, virtual uh, tally tells us. All right, so it looks like virtually uh, they've been approved. Uh, Kurt has been approved. So uh, would anyone like to make a motion regarding Dan? Hey, Matt Scott. Oh, very good. So uh, Matt Scott moves to elect Dan Johnson to the association board. Uh, is there a second? Seconded by Eugene Rottenberg. Uh, all in favor. So the people online vote right now. Uh, and if you're here present in the chapter room, if you're in favor, say aye. Okay. If you're opposed, say no. If you have abstained, uh, say here. Okay, right. Okay. Okay. So now we'll wait for the folks uh, virtually to vote. So uh, virtually, uh, Dan has been approved. So let us give Dan and Kurt a round of applause. Mm, nice. I'm excited for them both. I'm especially excited for Dan. Uh, no, I'm excited for Dan. You know, because I'm, I'm excited for Kurt, but Kurt has been there, right? But so this is, will be Dan's first term on the association board. Many of you in the, uh, the house now know Dan's younger brother, Joel Johnson, who's one of the current uh, chapter advisors. And so uh, that's really, I, I'm really excited for him to have this experience. He's going to join an association board uh, with Maynard Holberg, uh, Kurt Rosentrader, uh, Ken Ashley, Ryan Zinasek, and Matt Skarshog. And I've worked with five of those individuals. No, no, yeah. Uh, last the past three years, two years or so, and it's been a great opportunity. Uh, and so I'm really excited uh, for uh, Dan and Kurt in this new term. So, uh, yeah, so is there any questions about the business that we conducted? So, uh, yeah, we'll wait a few moments to see if there's any questions online about the business that we just conducted. All righty. Uh, here and none, I will turn it over to Ryan Heron, the chapter secretary, uh, for a chapter day in the life presentation. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan Heron. I'm a sophomore from Des Moines, Iowa. I'm studying software engineering. And this semester, I'm serving as the chapter secretary and the philanthropy chair. Um, today, I'm going to be taking you through a little presentation uh, about what life looks like in Farmhouse this semester. Um, some of it uh, you've already heard from Paxton and from Zach, uh, but I'll just run you through sort of what life looks like every day and some of the things we're doing um, in these COVID times. So I'll start out. Um, the first picture is of, I know you guys in here can't see it, the first picture is of the game room downstairs. Um, the executive board started meeting in July, uh, me meeting on a weekly basis to figure out ways to um, prevent the spread of COVID within the house. And working with the association board, um, we renovated in terms the game room to include bunks and desks, uh, which is the 12th slide, Andy. Um, ironically, I ended up being the first one down there. So I was... <laughs> I, I was the first one to experience the uh, protocols we had put into place, and it, it wasn't that bad. Um, so I spent 10 days down there, and we've now had um, 20 or 25 guys spend their self-isolation period down there. Um, it's been very effective at controlling the spread, um, and so I, I thank the executive team and uh, the A board for working together to put that together. Um, second, uh, the 13th slide. Um, just for fun. We've been looking for different ways to have fun around the house uh, with different social events being canceled, um, stuff like homecoming not happening. Um, this is a picture of uh, Nathan Weimer and Colin Johnson. We hosted a night of video game tournaments in the house. Um, 
we hosted a Super Smash Bros tournament that Nathan and Colin won, and as well as a Madden tournament. Um, so that was a fun way to bond with your brothers um, in a safe environment. Uh, that's as well as the 14th slide is a picture of that tournament um, going to. Another thing we did for fun was uh, Jamie. She hosted a uh, Bells of Iowa State competition. So we had chapter members and groups of chapter members compete in a competition to uh, sing or perform on an instrument, uh, Bells of Iowa State. And so that picture on the 15th slide is a picture of uh, Brother Cosgrove, Gorenson, Hughes, and Markman, um, who ended up winning that competition of singing Bells of, the, uh, Bells of Iowa State. Um, in addition, some uh, chapter activities like seminars have con continued um, just in a different format. On slide 16, uh, this is a seminar we had this week with James Townsend. Um, we screen him in virtually on the screen behind me um, and have the chapter members sit in the chapter room. Uh, this has been a great way to grow in the fourfold while keeping everyone safe in all manners. Uh, in addition, uh, as Zach mentioned earlier, we brought in 23 new members this fall. Uh, it was a tremendous result. This pledge class has been very successful so far, and they're actually getting initiated at the Pearl Ceremony tomorrow. So I just want you guys to give it up for the new pledge class and how hard they've worked. And in addition, uh, as Zach mentioned earlier, the recruitment committee um, led by uh, Creighton and Jack Cahill and Zach Rankin, who worked so hard to get that pledge class. It was phenomenal. Um, we have four spring pledges um, committed for the spring, um, so we're already off to a great start for next year. Um, in addition, as Zach mentioned, uh, we hosted Burritoville, and it looked a lot different than previous years, but uh, we raised $5,277 for Children's Cancer Connection, which was a 30% increase on our total from last year. So again, just that was amazing. Um, that's slide 17 and 18. It sort of shows uh, how we did things. Tables outside, and they were able to drive in and sit down at a socially distanced table that got disinfected um, between every use. Uh, and then now things that I don't have pictures for. Classes are almost all virtual. I think over half of the chapter has all of their classes online, which is obviously a huge change. Um, coming from the spring, uh, we ended the spring with a 3.75 cumulative GPA in the chapter, uh, which is fantastic. And we're looking to build on that again this semester. Um, classes being all virtual, it's obviously changed the environment of the house. Um, people are around the house a lot more. Everyone's spending time at their desks. Uh, the study areas have been utilized greatly. Um, the patio on the front porch, there's people out there studying every day. Um, so it's different, but it's not bad. Uh, we're making the best of it, and hopefully we continue, continue to build upon uh, what we left off in the spring. Um, as a result of people being around the house a lot more, we've gone through a lot more food. I know Jamie can attest, um, you know, having 70 guys in the house and being here, you know, every, almost every waking hour and not having options to eat on campus, we go through a lot of food. So we've uh, rearranged the budget a little bit to accommodate our, our food intake, um, which has been, uh, I know for, for Jamie, has been a lot of work this semester, but she's keeping us fed and healthy and we thank her for that. Um, yeah, all in all, um, that's how things are around the house. There's a lot of time for brotherhood and, you know, just being here and having people to support you um, in this environment is important. And that's something that Farmhouse really emphasizes and gives a great uh, environment of support for. And that's all I have. So thank you for your time. <laughs> yeah. and, and with that, I'll hand it over to Paxton for the closing uh, notes. Thank you, Ryan, for that uh, glimpse into uh, a day in the life of activity here. Uh, seems interesting. I mean, it seems we had a call. Uh, we had a meeting maybe two, uh, maybe a, two months ago, and someone said that we were living in unprecedented times. And someone jokingly said, well, actually, they, they were in the house during Y2K. And... <laughs> And if you remember how bad things were at Y2K, remember how bad things were at Y2K? I mean, things were not bad at Y2K. The, that, do any of you, I mean, when were y'all born? Were you even born in? Wow. Okay. So, yeah. So I won't go into detail about Y2K, but, but Y2K was, you know, for the year 2000, they thought all of these computer systems were going to break down. Remember that? I mean, they thought hospital, they just thought things would go haywire. 
and then really nothing happened. So it was a you know it was a big you know a big dud, right? I mean like nothing nothing happened that they thought was going to happen. And so we all had a great laugh. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, we had a great laugh about Y two living the house during Y two K because it was nothing. But uh, we all commiserate with you all. You know, we're not living it, so we can't really understand it. But we do appreciate you know the sacrifices that y'all are making, and we appreciate the creativity that you all are showing. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, you know, glimpse, Ryan. Uh, so in closing, uh, I guess I just want to thank everyone for attending virtually. Uh, and then also for attending in person. Uh, we got our work done today. Uh, we did miss some things. You know, for example, I miss Roger Bruni joking around with Roy Ryman today. Like like that would be a thing today. You know, uh, Linda Lloyd would be very gracious uh, in, in speaking with us and meeting uh, the members, you know, uh, the recipients of the Lloyd Scholarship and all the other folks, you know, our friends who we would just really enjoy seeing, we don't get to see. Uh, but Hopefully this will all be taken care you know, this will, we'll move beyond this. You know, we, we got beyond Y2K. So hopefully we can uh, get beyond this as well. So uh, on that note, uh, I think we, I think uh, I could entertain a motion to adjourn. But then when I see this here, I realized I never even like used the gavel to begin with. Uh, but uh, after this motion, I will use the gavel to close. Uh, but it, it's been here the whole time. If you can, you see it. Yeah. So it's been it's been here. Uh, so well, again, thank you, thank you for all you do for Farmhouse. And as Eugene said, you know there are countless ways that people uh, contribute, and we respect and appreciate all of that. And uh, as I said, it's an ecosystem. And even with everything else going on around in the world, it's clear that our ecosystem is working. And if we could just share some of our ecosystem with the rest of the world, uh, maybe we could uh, get things to be a little bit better. So on that note, uh, I'll entertain a motion. Matt Scarshaw, the vice president, moves that we, uh, what's is the motion that we uh, adjourn the meeting? Okay, motion that we adjourn the meeting, any seconds? Okay, uh, we have two seconds. Uh, so we'll take both of them. Uh, Steve Schmidt and Eugene Rodberg, thank you both uh, for those seconds. And uh, with that, uh, I think uh, we don't need to vote. I think we can just, uh, we just close it out. So uh, the 2020 annual meeting is now adjourned.